What were you thinking, Rachel? Have you lost your mind? We could have continued dating and enjoyed ourselves even more. Didn't you appreciate how everything was perfect between us? Phil, what are you talking about? Are you joking? Phil glanced at her and smirked. Unbelievable, you're so naive. I need to be honest with you. You excel in the bedroom, but not so much in everyday life. You must have been mistaken to believe I intended to marry you or something. Is that why you were trying to get pregnant? What are you talking about, baby? What's gotten into you? Rachel could no longer hold back the tears that had been building up behind her eyes. As a wave of sadness washed over her, the tears trickled down her cheeks, leaving a damp trail of raw emotion. I wasn't trying to get pregnant, Phil. That was never my intention. This little baby is a blessing from God. And... Rachel couldn't finish her sentence as Phil interrupted her. Well, if God gifted you this baby, then turn to him. Let him take care of the baby. At that moment, Rachel's once happy and beautiful world began to crumble around her. She could hardly believe what she was hearing. She had always thought that Phil truly loved her. He had a way with words, reading poems to her and speaking eloquently, painting a picture of a loving and devoted partner. But now, the harsh reality of his true feelings was tearing down the comforting illusion she had been living in, leaving her heartbroken and lost. Phil? I don't understand. Are you breaking up with me? He raised his hands above his head and exclaimed, Hallelujah! Finally you understand. You must be tough living with such a limited perspective. Not only am I breaking up with you, but I also want to make it clear that you shouldn't try to find me. Do you understand? Here, take this and go get an abortion and stop crying. I'm tired of all this. Where were you before this happened? Why didn't you plan a hand? Look at yourself. What made you believe I would marry you? And as for the baby, do you really think I want a child with someone like you? Someone like who? Rachel mumbled, her words barely audible, but Phil understood her. Listen to me. You represent the masses, the undesirables, the cast-offs. Do you understand now? There are ordinary people, and there are people like you, who have never escaped their circumstances and never will. That's exactly how I see you. Phil callously tossed an envelope at her feet and made his way to his car. Rachel's heart raced as she jumped up, wanting to run after him. She believed he had misunderstood her and desperately wanted to try explaining her situation one more time. She needed to tell him that he was about to become a father, but before she could reach him, Phil got into his car and sped away. Her eyes welled up with tears as she looked down at the envelope, hesitantly picking it up and opening it. A few hundred dollar bills spilled out onto her trembling hands, and at that moment, Rachel realized that Phil had understood everything perfectly. He had even come prepared for this devastating conversation. Her life took another drastic turn that day, leaving her to face an uncertain future on her own. Rachel spent her childhood in a modest trailer park with her parents and two younger brothers. From an early age, she took on a significant amount of responsibility around the house, handling most of the chores and caring for her brothers when their parents were away at work. This challenging upbringing instilled in her a strong sense of responsibility and resilience, qualities that would prove invaluable in the years to come. Rachel's mother worked as a dedicated nurse at the local hospital, frequently taking on night shifts to provide for her family. Despite the long hours and demanding nature of her job, she always found time to express her love and care for her family. Her kindness and generosity extended beyond her home, and she became a well-respected and cherished figure in the trailer park community. As a compassionate and warm-hearted woman, she not only made a difference in the lives of her patients, but also set a strong example for her children, who admired her commitment to both her profession and her family. The older residents of the trailer park held a special fondness for Rachel's mother as she frequently checked up on them, ensuring their well-being and offering her assistance whenever needed. Her genuine concern for their health and happiness, combined with her willingness to help without expecting anything in return, endeared her to the community. Her selflessness and compassionate nature not only improved the lives of her neighbors, but also fostered a sense of unity and support within the park. Rachel frequently accompanied her mother during these check-ins, learning firsthand the importance of empathy and community support. One evening, while her mother was working the night shift at the hospital, an unexpected knock came at their door. 
who was an elderly man from the trailer park who had sought help from the one person he knew he could rely on in times of need. Hey, Rachel, is Mom here? No, Mr. Lee, she's working the night shift today. What can I do for you, sir? Oh, Amy's not feeling well again. I told her that I would bring Rachel. With that, the old man turned around and began walking away. Despite her young age, Rachel proved to be a quick learner, having absorbed much of the knowledge and skills her mother demonstrated when assisting the elderly. Determined to help, Rachel sprinted after Mr. Lee and gently took his hand, guiding him back to his home so she could tend to Amy in her mother's stead. Mr. Lee? Mom won't be home for a while. Can I help instead? Mr. Lee chuckled, his eyes revealing a hint of doubt before he spoke. Sweetheart, are you sure you're not afraid of using a needle? Mom taught me how to do it, and I've practiced on a tomato many times, Rachel confidently replied. Mr. Lee cleared his throat and smiled. All right then. You know how much I love Mrs. Lee, right? Don't worry, Mr. Lee, everything's gonna be all right, Rachel reassured him, ready to help in any way she could. Rachel possessed a natural talent for caregiving, and her dedication that night did not go unnoticed. When her mother returned from work the following morning, Mr. Lee approached the trailer, a bouquet of flowers in hand. The vibrant blossoms served as a token of appreciation for the compassionate care Rachel had provided in her mother's absence, as well as a testament to the invaluable support their family offered the trailer park community. You're raising a kind-hearted young woman, just like yourself. Mr. Lee complimented Rachel's mother, acknowledging the impact her parenting had on nurturing Rachel's compassionate nature and her ability to help others in need. From that day forward, Rachel became a reliable source of assistance for the older residents in the trailer park who couldn't afford to visit the hospital. Rachel's experiences in helping others and her growing knowledge of medical procedures sparked a passion for medicine within her. She began to dream of pursuing a medical career, hoping to one day attend college and continue her education in the field. Rachel's father worked as a plumber, and although he frequently came home intoxicated, he was never aggressive or hostile. On the rare occasions when he was in good spirits, he would play with his children for a short time before drifting off to sleep amidst their scattered toys. More often than not, though, he would simply come home and fall asleep almost immediately, leaving the bulk of the parenting responsibilities to Rachel and her mother. Despite his shortcomings, the family adapted and did their best to support one another. Joe didn't have a drinking problem per se, rather, he struggled to cope with his emotions ever since their family was evicted from their house due to unpaid taxes. The move to the trailer park had hit him hard and alcohol became a temporary escape from the feelings of failure and disappointment that weighed him down. Despite his struggles, Rachel loved her father, cherishing the rare but wise words he offered. On the occasional days when he returned home sober, he would share stories about the complexities of good and evil in the world. These tales became a guiding light for Rachel, helping her navigate the world around her. From these stories, she gleaned the essential traits of a good person and strived to embody them in her own life, ultimately shaping her character and values. On the day Rachel was leaving for college, the entire trailer park community gathered to see her off. Olivia and Joe held an envelope of cash in their trembling hands. It wasn't much, but it was all they had managed to save up for their daughter's college expenses. Rachel, however, refused to take the money, insisting that she would find a part-time job to support herself. Just then, Mr. and Mrs. Lee stepped forward and said, Rachel, you have been a blessing to all of us here in the trailer park. Your kindness and dedication to helping others have touched our hearts, and we want to make sure you have the support you need as you embark on this new journey. We've all come together and collected money to help you with your college expenses. You've given so much to our community, and now it's our turn to give back to you. We believe in you, and we know that you'll make us proud. With that, Mr. and Mrs. Lee handed Rachel an envelope filled with contributions from the residents of the trailer park, a tangible representation of the love and appreciation they all felt for her. This heartfelt gesture left Rachel deeply moved and even more determined to succeed in her pursuit of higher education. Joe and Olivia stood there, tears streaming down their faces, Deeply moved by the community's generous gesture, Rachel wiped away her own tears and smiled. She looked at the people and expressed her gratitude. Thank you so much. This means a lot to me. You've all taught me a lot. Thank you. Then she turned to her parents and said, 
Mom, Dad, thank you guys so much. You raised me to be the person I am today. I promise I won't let any of you down. In college, Rachel dedicated herself wholeheartedly to her studies. After classes, she worked part-time cleaning houses to support herself financially. Fueled by her dreams and aspirations, she found the strength to overcome the challenges of balancing her academic and work responsibilities. Rachel's unwavering determination and commitment to her goals were an inspiring testament to her resilience and the values she had cultivated throughout her life. However, Rachel's life took an unexpected turn when she met Phil. He was the son of wealthy parents whose home she worked in. At first, their interactions were limited, barely acknowledging each other's presence. Rachel was a beautiful young lady, but she hadn't received much praise for her beauty, so when Phil complimented her for the first time, she was caught off guard. She initially assumed it was a passing remark, but Phil continued to surprise her with more compliments. Gradually, their relationship developed, and they started conversing outside of his home. After a few months, they were officially dating. Rachel's focused life seemed to be veering off course as she became more invested in her relationship with Phil, unaware of the challenges that lay ahead. Despite her intelligence and resilience, Rachel was also a naive and trusting person. She saw Phil as a kind and caring companion, but she was unaware of his true nature. As it turned out, Phil was a heartbreaker and a spoiled kid, accustomed to getting what he wanted and tossing it away when he grew bored or lost interest. Unbeknownst to Rachel, Phil had a pattern of pursuing relationships with women and discarding them once he lost interest, leaving them heartbroken and confused. Rachel was blinded by her feelings and trusted Phil fully. She didn't realize that she was just another victim in Phil's cycle of manipulation and selfishness. After her breakup with Phil, Rachel struggled to come to terms with her situation. She didn't want to burden her parents, who were already facing their own financial struggles. She couldn't bear the thought of showing up at their doorstep with a visible bump in her belly, knowing that it would only add to their hardships. Although she knew that her parents would always support her, Rachel wanted to handle the situation on her own. She didn't want to rely on others for help or to cause any more problems for her family. Rachel sat on the curb, feeling lost and alone, clutching the envelope of money that Phil had carelessly tossed at her feet. She had lost track of time and didn't know how long she had been sitting there, lost in her thoughts and emotions. She wondered what her future held and how she was going to provide for her child. She felt overwhelmed by the weight of her situation and the uncertainty of what lay ahead. Excuse me, miss? Are you okay? Rachel looked up. A man around 30 years old or so was standing in front of her. She didn't recognize him right away, but he did. Wait, you're a medical student, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't recognize you. I'm sorry, I gotta go. Rachel replied with a hint of embarrassment in her voice. The man was a teacher, Mr. Kramer, a new addition to the faculty at Rachel's college. She didn't recognize him because she had been so consumed by her relationship with Phil that she'd barely paid attention to her new instructors. Rachel had always been a top student, earning A's in all her classes. However, since she started dating Phil, her grades had started to slip, and she had gone from being an A student to a C- student, struggling to balance her studies and her personal life. It was a chilly and humid evening. The cold surface of the curb made it too uncomfortable for Rachel to sit any longer. As she got up, she took a few steps and suddenly felt lightheaded. She stumbled and almost fell over, but the man caught her just in time. Whoa, are you okay? The man asked, steadying Rachel on her feet. Rachel's head was spinning. She had been sitting on the curb for so long that she had forgotten how cold it was outside. No, this is not going to fly. You definitely need some help. Where do you live? At the door? That's quite a way to go. She looked at his watch. Yeah, there won't be any other buses until morning. You know what, young lady? Come to my place. You're shivering. I will get something hot to drink. Rachel was too tired to resist, so she leaned on Robin's arm and suddenly recalled his name. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Finally remembered my name, huh? Robin smiled and asked her name. I'm Rachel. All right, Rachel. Let's get going. My apartment is over there. The man led Rachel to his car and opened the passenger door for her. She sat down and he drove them to his small apartment. As they entered the apartment, Rachel was surprised to see that the man had a small library with books on medicine, anatomy, and pharmacology. 
Rachel's eyes lit up as she saw the books, and the man noticed her interest. He offered her some tea and sat down with her, showing her his collection of medical books. They talked about different diseases and treatments, and Rachel was surprised at how knowledgeable he was. These books are my companions. With them, I forget about loneliness, Robin said, gesturing to the shelves of books. When Rachel heard the word loneliness, she felt a pang of sadness in her heart, and tears streamed down her cheeks involuntarily. She quickly wiped them away, embarrassed. Robin was taken aback by Rachel's sudden burst of tears. He realized that something significant must have happened to her, most likely a breakup or something similar. However, her tears were too intense for a typical breakup reaction. It was as if the world had come crashing down on her. Concerned, Robin placed a comforting hand on her shoulder and asked gently, Rachel, are you okay? Is there something you want to talk about? Rachel hesitated at first, but then broke down and told him everything that had happened with Phil. Robin listened carefully and with empathy as Rachel poured out her heart to him. He could feel the pain she had gone through and understood the weight of the burden she was carrying. He didn't judge her, but instead offered his support in a comforting presence. After Rachel finished speaking, Robin said, You're a strong young lady. You'll get through this, but you can't give up on your dreams. You have to keep fighting for what you want. Then he made her a cup of tea and asked her to rest. She felt comforted by his words and the warmth of the tea. She realized that there were still good people in the world who cared about others. Soon, she fell asleep on the couch, and Robin covered her with a blanket. In the morning, Rachel opened her eyes and was immediately reminded of everything that had happened. She jumped up and sat on the sofa, feeling overwhelmed. Oh God, what am I going to do? As she sat there, the smell of freshly brewed coffee filled the room. Rachel quickly got up, straightened the sofa, and slowly made her way to the kitchen. Good morning. I was about to wake you up. I was afraid the food would get cold. Come on in. Take a seat. Thanks. I'm not really hungry. Yeah, right. You are hungry. Come on now. Take a seat. Rachel looked at him thankfully and took a seat. At some point, Robin looked at her and said, I would like to have a serious conversation with you. I understand your situation and I have an offer you might be interested in. 20 years have passed. Hang in there, Mr. Miller. The ambulance is close, the personal assistant was telling Phil. Phil's face was distorted from the pain he was experiencing. Doctors told him he needed to get operated on a while ago. He didn't listen. Look at him now. Phil's personal doctor showed up a few minutes earlier than the ambulance. When he saw the agony Phil was in, he really wanted to say, See, you should have listened to me and get the operation way earlier, but knowing how stubborn Phil was, he simply said, Oh my God, Mr. Miller. Phil knew that the doctor wanted to say something else entirely, so he said to him, I know, I know, let's fix me now. What do you think we can do? Well, there's only one doctor who does magic in such situations. She works at the KB. I'm already calling her. Phil leaned back in the armchair, his mind racing with worry. The thought of his life depending on a random person, let alone a woman, didn't feel pleasant. He had found himself in a difficult situation, one that he never expected to be in. He didn't really trust women, not after what his beloved wife did to him. She had not only tried to run away from him, but also tried to take his fortune with her, and she almost succeeded. Luckily, his guards were there to stop her. Phil had been devastated when he found out about his wife's plan. They had been married for over three years, and he had never suspected that she was capable of such deceit. It had shattered his trust not only in her, but in women in general. He had always believed that he could trust his instincts when it came to people, but his wife's betrayal had proven him wrong. He couldn't help but wonder if all women were like her, manipulative, deceitful, and only interested in his money. Despite the pain, Phil slumped in his chair, staring out the window. The sun was setting casting a warm glow over the room. But even the beauty of the sunset couldn't shake off the feeling of loneliness that had taken hold of him. He wasn't old. He wasn't poor. But he was utterly alone. He did his best to conceal the emotional burden this loneliness brought upon him, as he wanted to maintain a positive image. Back when his parents were still alive, things seemed much simpler and less challenging. 
When Phil was younger, his parents tragically passed away during a trip to South America. Wanting to express his gratitude for their support, Phil had gifted him a vacation to Colombia as a present when he graduated from college. Although he claimed it was a thank you gift, his true motive was to host a massive party at their house while they were away. Sadly, Phil's parents were not well suited for the challenging humid conditions of the tropical jungle excursion they embarked on. During a break in the forest, they unknowingly consumed some toxic food that had been missed by the inattentive tour guides. As their health rapidly declined, they were taken to the nearest medical facility for help. Unfortunately, a critical error occurred at the hospital when the staff mistakenly administered the wrong treatment. This dreadful mistake ultimately led to their untimely deaths. Since then, Phil has been tormented by a deep fear of hospitals, avoiding them at all costs. This traumatic experience left him with an overwhelming phobia that has haunted him ever since. Phil's ulcer was discovered unexpectedly. This surprising revelation came during a routine medical checkup, which he reluctantly attended due to his overwhelming fear of hospitals. Initially, Phil's ulcer was not severe. It caused him mild discomfort and the doctors recommended surgery to treat it. However, because of his deep-rooted fear of hospitals, Phil continued to postpone the operation despite the potential risks. Now, as Phil anxiously awaited the arrival of an ambulance, thought of going back for treatment was unbearable. As he paced back and forth, his mind raced with questions and concerns about his upcoming surgery. Would the operation be successful? Would the doctors make another mistake like they did with his parents? Each moment spent waiting for the ambulance seemed like an eternity, as his heart pounded with fear and uncertainty. Little did Phil know that this decision to finally face his fears would change his life in ways he could never have anticipated. When Phil finally arrived at the hospital, he was on the verge of losing consciousness. His condition had deteriorated rapidly, making the situation even more urgent. Without delay, he was wheeled into the operating room, where a team of skilled medical professionals prepared to perform the surgery. His personal doctor, who was well acquainted with Phil's medical history, was also present to ensure that the surgical team had all the necessary information to provide the best possible care. As Phil gradually regained consciousness, he felt an overwhelming urge to pray. However, not knowing how to properly offer a prayer, he simply gazed around the room instead. His vision was so blurry, making it difficult to discern any details. All he could see were white, shadowy figures bustling about, attending to various tasks. These figures were the medical staff upon whom his life now depended. At one point, the entire medical team gathered around the table where Phil lay. He felt the prick of a needle entering his arm, followed by the placement of a mask over his face. As the anesthesia began to take effect, a doctor approached and looked down at him. Phil realized that she must be the one everyone had been talking about, the skilled surgeon entrusted with his care. As he gazed into her eyes, a flash of recognition struck him. Despite the haze of his current state, he knew those eyes all too well. With the last bit of strength he could muster, he whispered her name just before succumbing to the anesthesia. Rachel. Rachel's eyebrows shot up in surprise upon hearing her name. She stepped back from the operating table and picked up Phil's medical history to confirm her suspicions. It all clicked into place. As she read his name again, her eyes widened in realization. The man lying vulnerable on her operating table was someone from her past. Mrs. Graham, that was impeccable as usual, complimented one of Rachel's colleagues as they finished the surgery. Stop, it's an ordinary ulcer. We've done hundreds of them together. Rachel responded, downplaying her performance. Still, you nail it every time, and today I felt like I was watching a master class. That was beautiful. You're going to set a record for the cleanest and fastest operation. Rachel smiled at the praise and asked for a cigarette. Her colleague looked at her, eyes wide in surprise. But you don't smoke. I don't, but on rare occasions when I need to calm my nerves, I do. They stepped outside together. The man lit a cigarette for Rachel, took one for himself, and then asked a question that had been on his mind. Am I wrong to think that the patient is somehow related to you? No, you're not. It's someone I've despised for a long time, she admitted. It must be tough for you right now. I'm going to leave you alone. 
Rachel appreciated her colleague's thoughtfulness as he walked away, leaving her to her thoughts. At that moment, for some reason, her mind drifted back to the moment when Robin had made the offer to her. Rachel, I've been accepted into a prestigious medical program abroad. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and they strongly prefer participants to have a married status. I know this is going to sound crazy, but I'm offering you a chance to marry me. You'll give birth, we'll name the child, and I promise I won't hurt you. You'll have everything you've ever dreamed of. The program lasts three years. Once we return, it'll be up to you to decide whether to stay married to me or go back to your previous life. When Robin finished making his unusual proposal, Rachel was caught off guard. She had anticipated many things, but never an offer like this. Sensing her hesitation, Robin told her that she could take a week to think it over. During that time, they could also get to know each other better, which might help her make a more important decision. Rachel couldn't help but wonder what life would have been like had she not accepted Robin's offer and taken the opportunity to build a deeper connection with him. Over the course of a few weeks, Robin and Rachel spent a significant amount of time together. They went on long walks, during which they shared stories, experiences, and aspirations, allowing them to form a deeper understanding of each other. Robin also treated Rachel to some memorable evenings at various restaurants, where they enjoyed delicious meals and delightful conversation. As they continued to spend time together, Rachel found herself increasingly intrigued by Robin's personality and ideas, and she started to seriously consider his proposal. The prospect of a life-changing adventure, the opportunity for personal growth, and the potential to forge a lasting bond with Robin made the decision all the more difficult. Rachel found herself questioning why Robin, a handsome and successful man, had chosen her for this proposal. After all, she was a pregnant student on the verge of failing her studies. She couldn't help but wonder why he didn't already have a significant person in his life, someone he could rely on for such an important decision. As they spent more time together, she couldn't shake the feeling that there must be some hidden reason behind his choice. Was it mere chance, or had he seen something special in her that she couldn't quite grasp? The mystery only added to the complexity of her decision-making process as she weighed the potential risks and rewards of entering into this unconventional arrangement. Meanwhile, Robin was focused on one thing, receiving Rachel's affirmative answer to his proposal. He recognized the tremendous opportunity that lay before them and believed that embarking on this journey together could enrich both of their lives. As he anxiously awaited her response, Robin hoped that their time spent together had been enough to convince her of the potential they shared. In reality, Robin's participation in the prestigious medical program had already been secured, and his marital status was not a determining factor. He had been selected for the program based on his skills and qualifications alone. The idea of marrying Rachel was not a requirement as Rachel thought in the beginning, but rather something very personal to Robin that he would reveal later on. Rachel ultimately agreed to Robin's proposal, and they entered into what Rachel thought of as marriage of convenience to embark on the medical program together. However, over the course of that year, their relationship deepened and evolved, turning their marriage into something genuine and meaningful. They became true husband and wife, not just in name, but also in spirit, as they supported each other through the challenges and triumphs of the program. Throughout their journey, Rachel never once regretted her decision as she realized that it had brought her not only personal and professional growth but also a loving and fulfilling partnership with Robin. Five years later, Rachel and Robin welcomed the baby girl into their family. The arrival of their daughter had a profound impact on Rachel's son, who instantly felt a sense of responsibility for his little sister. He embraced the role of an older brother, doing his best to protect and care for her. This newfound bond between the siblings strengthened the family's connection, bringing them even closer together. Rachel and Robin watched with pride as their children formed a loving relationship, grateful for the life they had built together through their unconventional beginnings. As the days went by, Rachel did her best to avoid the hospital ward where Phil was recovering from his surgery. She felt conflicted given their past and her feelings towards him. However, Phil was insistent on seeing the doctor who had saved his life. Reluctantly, Rachel agreed to visit Phil, knowing that it was her professional duty to ensure his well-being and recovery. She prepared herself to face him, aware that their reunion could bring up a myriad of emotions and unresolved issues. Did you want to see me? 
I'm all ears, sir, Rachel said, trying to maintain a professional demeanor. Rachel, are you going to keep running around and pretend we don't know each other? Phil smiled and attempted to grab her hand. She deftly swerved away and asked, If you don't have any more questions, then I should get going. Come on now, why are you acting like a little girl? Do you still hold on to those old memories? Things have changed, and we've changed too. Are you still single, by the way? Rachel looked at him in surprise. He wasn't joking at all. He genuinely believed that Rachel might still be interested in him. She smiled and replied, I'm sorry, sir, but I think that's none of your business. With that, she turned around and walked towards the door, leaving Phil to reflect on their encounter and the passage of time. As Rachel was about to leave the room, Phil managed to sit up in his bed, determination in his eyes. Rachel, don't forget that I always get what I want, he declared, hinting at his persistent nature. Rachel couldn't help but feel a mix of irritation and amusement at his audacity. It seemed that despite the years and their personal growth, Phil still clung to his old ways. Shaking her head, she exited the room, leaving him to ponder his own words and the reality of their situation. Every day, fresh flowers appeared on Rachel's desk, clearly sent by Phil in an attempt to win her over. And every day, she dutifully carried them out to the reception area, where she left them for the nurses to enjoy. The envious glances from the nursing staff did not go unnoticed by Rachel, but she remained steadfast in her decision to keep her distance from Phil. Despite his persistence, Phil found it increasingly difficult to get a hold of Rachel for a meaningful conversation. She was careful to avoid any unnecessary interaction with him, maintaining her professional boundaries and focusing on her duties as a doctor. One day, Phil was granted permission to walk around the hospital and he decided to seize the opportunity to catch Rachel outside. He didn't bother trying to learn more about her current life. All that mattered to him was the connection he felt between them. He stood outside, observing birds as they fought over a piece of bun and chirped loudly. The scene reminded him of the way people fought over things, but he couldn't finish watching as the birds were suddenly scared away by a white Lexus pulling up to the front doors. A minute later, Rachel emerged from the hospital. Phil saw this as his chance to finally have a conversation with her outside the confines of the hospital ward. He gathered his courage and prepared to approach her, hoping to rekindle the connection they once had. Rachel! Phil called out, drawing her attention. What do you need, Phil? I just need to talk to you. Can I have some of your time? Rachel glanced at her watch and said, You have two minutes. You've become cold-hearted. Listen, Rachel, when I saw you, I realized that nothing has changed. I still love you. I think we need to try again. Rachel burst out laughing. What about my opinion? Are you interested in hearing what I have to say? Phil looked surprised. I thought you loved me so much. Remember those times, Rachel? Phil, please leave me alone. I truly hoped I would never see you again. Rachel attempted to walk away, but Phil grabbed her hand. You don't understand what you're walking away from, he insisted. At that precise moment, the door of the white Lexus opened, and the young man stepped out. As Phil caught sight of him, he froze in his tracks and, in surprise, let go of Rachel's hand. The handsome young man standing before him was the spitting image of Phil himself, albeit much younger. Phil couldn't believe his eyes, while Rachel simply looked on, her expression revealing a mix of amusement and relief. Any problems, Mom? The young man asked Rachel. No, honey, everything is all right. This man felt unwell, but I think he's better now. So, shall we go? Yes, let's go. Dad and Jenny are waiting at the restaurant. Phil slowly sat down on the stairs, feeling defeated. He realized that any further attempts to win Rachel back would be futile. The young man opened the car door for his mother and then returned to Phil. He studied Phil's features for a moment, seemingly intrigued by their striking resemblance. A wave of hope washed over Phil as he wondered if the young men would question their similarities. Phil mentally prepared himself to confess everything, anticipating that this unexpected encounter could potentially lead to a connection with someone he never knew existed. Mr. Miller, I have a curious personality and I tend to question things around me. I've known you for a long time and I know who you really are to me. I'd like to ask you for one favor. Please stay away from our family. If you don't, I'm going to have to stop you. Good luck. 
the young man declared, surprising Phil with his directness. The car drove away, leaving Phil to his thoughts. He sat there for a long time, reflecting on his life and the choices he had made. Here he was, a man whose happiness was measured in pockets full of money and a deep-seated hatred towards someone who wasn't supposed to exist, simply because that's what Phil had decided. He couldn't help but wonder how things could have been different if he had made different choices in the past. Perhaps he wouldn't be sitting alone on these steps, having her to stay away from his own son. Perhaps he would have found true happiness and fulfillment in life instead of the empty satisfaction that came from material possessions and power. As he stood up and dusted himself off, Phil looked at the horizon and a deep sense of loneliness settled in his heart. He knew that this was how he was being paid back for his cruelty in the past. It was a strange feeling for him as it was the first when he truly regretted his actions and realized he had grown up. He walked up the stairs back to the hospital and disappeared in the hallway. Why do you think Robin chose to marry a pregnant medical student? Thank you for listening to this story. Please hit like and leave your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching.